Hello everyone, it's MyDB14, we're with a brand new video. So today, we are back and we are talking about Chris Chan. In the last video, we spoke about Blue Spike. And the thing that Blue Spike did specifically, that's quite dark, it's quite intense, quite serious. However, as we learned at the end, it didn't have any long-lasting effects on Chris. Often Blue Spike is compared to another troll, or should I say, a group of trolls. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the idea, guys. Funny enough, seeing as Clyde Cash... Blue Spike, they're all around kind of 2010, all around that kind of time. The idea guys don't actually surface until October 2017. They're around from October 2017 to April 2018, so not very long, but they have certainly had the most psychologic damage on Chris as a whole. A lot of Chris's current ideas, well, his fiction, is, is based upon the idea, guys. They were able to manipulate him, they even embezzled him for $6,000, which we'll get into later. The mental and the financial impact they had on him was like nothing ever done before with Christian trolls. I mean, yes, they did completely humiliate him. They did ruin his life a lot. But this is financial and this is long lasting mentally. It's still kind of going on to this day. Although they're out of the scene, their impact is still evident. So let, let's get straight into it. Obviously, like always, we're referring to the CWC wiki. Best place for your Christian knowledge. The idea, guys, were a group of four trolls. Joshua Wise, Stephen Boyd, and two anonymous followers. Together, they manipulated, extorted, and brainwashed Chris from October 2017 to April 2018. Initially, their aim was to see how gullible Chris was, but this soon degenerated into taking advantage of him financially and coercing him into performing many degrading acts, including some that would put Blue Spike to shame. This was a big reference that came up in Blue Spike's page and in this page. They're often interlinked very much as Chris's worst trolls. And I think it's very fair. After looking through this, after doing my research, I can't really disagree. <laughs> so the actual members of the idea guys, well, there's four of them. There's Joshua Wise, who was kind of the main guy. He did most of the stuff, basically. He was the idea guy. Then there was Stephen Boyd, who was kind of the idea guy 2.0. He still did a lot of stuff. They kind of all worked together. Joshua Wise was the ringleader. Stephen Boyd was the guy on the sides. No one really knew about him until it was all over. And he did stuff in the dark. Now, the other two, their names have been kept confidential because they dropped out very early they didn't do much of the trolling so presuming it was four guys who were kind of seeing how far they could push chris and eventually they realized that they could push chris very far and two of them dropped out so i think that's fair that their names are kept hidden so this page references kiwi farms a lot which was once the cwc forums which is where people would go to discuss chris chan back when he was kind of at his pinnacle at his height of popularity and people were talking about him a lot it's now called kiwi farms because people discuss all kind of strange eccentric people however chris had a community that backed him especially with the idea guys there was a group of kiwi farm users who were called the guard dogs and they were run by a guy called no if it it wasn't for them perhaps the idea guys would have genuinely pushed chris to the limit it's only because of the guard dogs that chris was able to escape the torment if i'm honest i don't want to spend too much time on the idea guys because it's a lot about sonichu law and what he does to the actual law of the comics as i don't really cover that as much i don't want to i don't want to reference that completely joshua wise started off by manipulating chris into believing that fictional worlds were actually alternate dimensions this sounds very strange but chris genuinely believed this and and through the manipulation from Wise, he was able to gain his trust and get him to believe all kinds of different strange things that affected his work, affected his actual mental reality. That he was promised superpowers in real life if he did certain things. He obviously never got these superpowers, but he did these things for them. This one is more sad because Chris doesn't really do anything wrong. He puts his trust in the wrong people, yes, but they manipulate him in such a way that in this one specifically, you genuinely feel bad for Chris. So as I said, there's a lot about chris's fictional world and his sense of reality which the idea guys like to mess around with they like to play around with stuff they like to drop little tidbits in his comics and often it was jokes that they'd make that would go over chris's head he wouldn't understand them and therefore they'd go straight in the comics and that was when people would start to realize that he was getting trolled he was probably getting trolled for a couple months before anyone realized that anything was happening because they were very they were very subtle especially at the start Again, I'm not covering it much, but one of the big things that um, jumped out to me was this phrase. Wise told Chris that Maggie Chan had a vision that Crystal would be born from Chris... <sighs> Sonichu. Despite going blatantly against Chris's beliefs and wishes, the message was convincing enough that Chris drew a horrifying piece of artwork depicting the act where comic Chris apologizes to Sonichu, but insists 
that destiny called us to make this baby. Typically, this might be quite funny, the use of that and the fact that it is obviously fictional. However, here it's just sad. These are characters that Chris has grown to love for probably 15 years nearly at this point. It's crazy. And he loves them so much, they've kind of twisted him and manipulated him into doing this horrid act in his fictional world. It's it's crazy how these guys make you empathize with Chris. So what I wanted to talk specifically about was the extortion. Oh boy. The final straw in the unpopular opinion of the idea guys were the acts of extortion to Chris. Null, the owner of Kiwi Farms, revealed that they managed to extort six thousand dollars worth of video games and other accessories not only that boyd also demanding twenty thousand dollars during a discord chat or else he would report chris as a pedophile to the fbi when the idea guys threatened to destroy cwcville chris withheld a mortgage payment to save his fictional setting nearly causing the so-called homeless saga in may 2018 chris has a tendency to hold on to things obsessively and here, this actually came in luck. He kept all of the receipts, all of the payments from all the transactions he made for the $6,000 to give to these guys. And luckily, Chris was trusting enough of Noel, who was in charge of the Kiwi Farms, to give him access to his Discord so they could collect all this information and therefore expose these two guys for stealing this money from Chris. They manipulated him into him buying all this stuff for them and nearly going homeless. Here is a quote from Noel. So naturally, once they have Chris believing that they have Chris confessing to being a pedophile and mm, his mother, once they have those confessions, they threaten to release it to the public if he doesn't record himself shitting on the floor and punching himself in the face until tears and snot are running down his chin. At one point, they ask Chris to punch his mother, which he does, though he claims lightly. These are the kind of things that the idea guys were able to do. Although this page itself doesn't go into huge amounts of detail on what he actually physically did, it clearly shows that they stole $6,000 from him and attempted to steal much, much more at the threat of him being exposed as a pedophile or as a rapist. It's insane. This this goes from funny haha trolling to just being pure dark manipulative theft. They've never been arrested or anything. People have called the police because of this. Chris technically bought them out of his own free will. It's it's a very hard case to do and therefore they haven't been arrested or fined or anything like that, which is quite sad that nothing has come from it. They have just got away with stealing $6,000. This has kind of discussed who they were, what they did. Now, how did they actually stop talking with Chris? See, they were talking to him for about six months on Discord and in the end, Chris gave his Discord account to Noel, who was in charge of the Kiwi Farms, him and his team. So they had received these logs and they went through it and they found Joshua Wise, first of all. And they then doxed him and doxed his close family. And they kept on releasing all this new information and more and more new information until he eventually agreed to leave Chris alone, which they stopped doxing him. However, he didn't. But from then on, it very much slowed down to a pace that nothing was really happening. Nothing of the scale that had happened before. Several months later, then Boyd was doxxed and exposed, not his family, but just him. It's almost rendered them unable to do anything to Chris because people know where they live. They know all this stuff. Again, I want to clarify, like in all of my other videos, I do not condone doxing. But sadly, this seemed the only way on which they would stop harassing, stealing, manipulating Chris. I don't know, I wasn't there. There might be another way of doing it. Hopefully doxing, doxing is never the option. However, here it's managed to stop Chris from receiving such abuse. It's it's a very difficult scenario. They have since stopped talking to Chris. However, a lot of his fictional work has kept the same from their ideas. Like, for example, other concepts that Chris still holds on to include his bisexuality, his polyamorous marriage, which ended the love quest, Robert Chew, theories about Ted Bundy, and the 69 Sonic Chews and Rose Chews. This was just a list of different characters that the idea guys gave to Chris that he made real, one of them including Ted Bundy. If you know who Ted Bundy is, you know that that's probably not a good idea for the Sonic Chew comics. So I don't, I don't want to run on too much. I'll be very interested to see what people have to say in the comment section because these guys are wild. They physically committed a lot of crimes against Chris and haven't been brought to justice anywhere near as much as they should have done. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe. And I'll be my DB14. Up the Christian. See ya.
bird, ay. I just hit a couple hundred dollars on a third, ay. Pink pussy, swallow up the dick, call it current, uh. Painting on the pussy, now I got the pussy burnt, uh. Pussy soft and wet, just like the stank control by Joe Skate. Diamonds on me, so fake, all the shit, oh,